Hi, today I'm going to show you how to attach hair to your crocheted doll. To demonstrate, I have a little sister doll made from the Featherby and Friends pattern. She is wearing the lacy top, which I'm going to take off in order to do her hair. And she has the built-in leggings, which is one of three options. So you can do the leggings or just some undies or full tights covering her feet too. So she has the leggings on and the materials that we're going to need today are a hook, something to measure the hair with, a sharp pair of scissors, and of course the yarn for the hair. So to make this doll I was using a four millimeter hook, but to do her hair I'm going to use a smaller one. Now, I used to use the same size hook, but I found that using a smaller one makes it just a little bit easier to get in between the stitches and makes it less likely that you're going to leave a mark in case you decide to pull that particular piece of hair out later or something. Um, so this is a D 3.25 millimeter. I've also used a C, but today I'm going to use a D. I have my very sharp scissors. Um, which just makes it easier for trimming it at the end because you're going to be dealing with a lot of hair and also for cutting the initial pieces. So this is my little canvas board that I've been using for a long time. It's starting to get a little bit damaged. But as you can see, it's a five by seven and I use the short side for shorter hair and the long side for longer hair. And that just helps me keep it consistent. So today I'm going to do shorter hair for her. So I'm going to wrap it around the five inch width here and you're going to want to make a lot of hair so I'm just going to wrap around a whole bunch here and I would normally keep on going but for this demonstration I'll stop there just so I can show you the next step and you want to make sure you're not pulling too tight um, because the yarn is stretchy, um, if you pull too tight, then it changes the length of the yarn too much. Um, if you're pulling tight, you just you want to try to keep it consistent is all. So I'm going to cut along the one side there. So now I have pieces that are probably just shy of 10 inches long because of the stretch, which is fine. So. The first thing I'm going to do is define her hairline. So what I usually do is use my index finger to kind of measure the distance between her eye and where her high hairline should be. And I do the same thing on the sides too. This just kind of helps me keep it consistent. So the first thing to remember when you're putting in a stitch of hair is that whichever way you want that hair to fall, you need to put the hook in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna show an example right on her forehead here. So I'm starting probably about here. So this piece of hair is gonna fall away from her part to the right. So I'm gonna insert my hook from right to left. Like so. And I'm going to grab the fold of this yarn. So I have, this is our, our 10 inch piece of yarn. I've got it folded in half. So I've got that fold there. I'm going to grab a hold of that, pull it through. And then you can either do this with your hook or with your fingers. You're going to grab the two tails there and pull them both through that loop and then pull it tight like so. So that is one piece of hair. I'll do another one going the same direction right next to it and you know if I decided that I have my hairline a little bit too high on her forehead which I'm kind of thinking maybe I do I can always add another row down um, the next row down to fill it in and this is a good time to take your time and really 
make sure you're getting it right. So I'm just going to put one here just to get a feel for if it should be lower or not. And I think it should. I'm thinking that this one was up a little bit too high. I don't want her to have that big of a forehead. But the most important part when doing the hair is getting that hairline right because it's what really affects the appearance of the doll. Everything else is a little bit less important. It's the stuff right by her face that changes the look. So take your time and do a nice job with the hairline. So I've got three stitches right along the edge of her forehead there. And now I'm going to show you how to do the ones on the other side of the part. So if this is her part right here and these ones fall this way, then these ones need to fall the other way. So I'm going to insert my hook the other way. So I just turn the doll all the way around because it's easier to turn the doll than turn my hand. And grab a hold of that yarn, pull it through like so. And I'm going to do a couple more going that direction. So you can kind of see how it's going to work. Now this little girl is going to have pigtails in the end. So I'm going to be making a nice defined part down the middle. And see this is what I mean by using your fingers instead. If you have a hard time with the hook, once you've got it through, you can just put your fingers through that loop and grab the two strands and pull it. Um, sometimes it's just a little bit easier, a little bit faster, whatever works for you. I'll just do one more here because you're going to see in a minute here how the hairline at the forehead is going to come to a corner. I just try to pull so that those ends are even like so. Okay, so I'm already at the edge of her eyes here. So at some point I need to start going down in order to frame her face. What I like to do is once I have that forehead defined, I place a couple of stitches where the hairline should be on either side of her face. And then I bring it up to connect up here. If you just come down from here, it's a little bit harder to visualize. So I start right in the middle there and then go up to connect and then I'll go down here. So same thing as before. Whichever way you want the hair to fall, you need to put the stitch in opposite. So if her hair was down, you'd want it to fall down. So we're going to insert our hook up. And I usually do, like I said, about the width of my index finger and that's about three stitches. But can kind of play around and just see. So that's four stitches and this is three stitches. And I'm thinking that might look a little bit too close. So I'm going to try it over here actually. Every doll is different and you just got to play with it and see what looks good. So now that I have that defined where I want it to be, then I work my way up to connect with that forehead hairline. And once you get the hang of this, it really doesn't take that long. A lot of people are intimidated by putting on the hair because it's a little bit time consuming, but once you get the hang of it, you can move pretty quickly. And definitely having all of those pieces cut ahead of time is essential. Okay, so here I'm going to match up those two hairlines. Oops, I dropped it part way through. There we go. And the great thing about this method is that if I decide I don't like it, then all I have to do, I actually do like this, but I'm going to show you anyways. I'm going to take a hold of that 
loop right there and pull and it's out just like that so really it's very easy to play around with it and get it exactly how you want it and the hairline really is the most time-consuming part because it's most important okay so she's coming along nicely I'll do the same thing on that side and kind of the same thing down at the bottom here where her chin is going to be I try to do the sides evenly so you know I've only gone down to this far on this side so I want to fill in the other side before I finish off this side just kind of working back and forth and filling them in evenly that way we are most likely to stay symmetrical The yarn I'm using today is paint box yarn. It is the um, their acrylic medium weight yarn. But I often use Karen Simply Soft because I just love the way that it drapes. It's so soft. Um, another of my favorites to use is Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. It's also very soft and makes a nice hair and then if you want curly hair homespun lion brand homespun is the way to go and that is very thick so it actually takes a lot less time because you need less yarn and fewer stitches to make it look just as full so if you're looking to save time maybe curly hair is the way to go all right so there I have the top half and her part will be right about there and then I'm going to need to continue down on either side so you want to kind of figure out where her chin would be and make that your stopping point. Oops. Quite often the stitches are not in a perfectly straight line, so you're going to have to make some decisions about which stitch to go into and that kind of thing. I'm just going to finish off this section and then I'm going to need to make myself some more yarn and uh, come back and show you the next step which will be making her part and then filling in the back of her head so come on back for part two and see how that's done <laughs> 